Okay guys, welcome to another episode of Be Built by Broza, live here from the Mecca of bodybuilding. Uh, and on today's show, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stick with the same theme that we've been having for the last few shows. I'm going to show you some variations on some bicep movements uh, that are sort of uh, outside the box a little bit. Again, we want to say we're not telling you to replace the basic barbell curls, the basic preacher curls, the basic dumbbell curls. We're just saying you can augment your bicep workouts like any other workout with some of these specialized movements to maybe hit different sets of muscle fibers, to just hit the muscle a little bit differently, to get a different feel and maybe to get you out of that stagnation point. Also on today's show, I want to introduce my good friend here, Chris Fisher, who recently started an awesome company called Mindset Grind. And I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about the company and why we have him on the show today. Hey Chris, nice to have you man. Nice to have me. So listen, you have, you have a really cool story behind this company and I want you to talk about it uh, uh, briefly right now. And, and I really want you to tell the, the, the public why you started comp that company because it's actually a good, it's a good reason. It comes from a good, it's not just about making money. It's, it's a good place. It came, so why did you start the company? Originally it was to help out. I was fortunate in business to be successful and I wanted to help others. I had a good friend who was Jason Reinhardt, two-time world MMA champion, Olympic junior gold medalist. Built his neck in a fight, trying to get him going. So we developed dog tags to get him, get him recognized again. And uh, money brought in went to him. So show me the dog tags. Dog tags. These are these. Who you're wearing now? Yeah. We do emblems. That's a, it's a lion, right? Yeah. And they have motivational things on them. Won't, this, you, won't you read that motivation? This one is hard to read. This is uh, actually not Jason, but Jason's is the one I is actually my favorite. It's his quote that we published is. Loser, uh, quitters never win. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm Trying putting you on the spot the right now. <laughs> Winners never quit, quitters never win. There you go. And that just went a long way with me and so many people. I just thought about it. I like, no, I'm gonna make a dog tag. All proceeds were, were meant to go to him. And I wanted to do that for all the athletes. Like, how cool is that to have your own dog tag? <laughs> and you actually make money from that. And then eventually go into my own products. That's awesome. All right, so you have a lot more than just the dog tag, um, but here's the, the logo right there. And it's uh, uh, grind. Mindset grind. Mindsetgrind.com. Okay. And then we're going to show some, so some of the products you have a little bit later. For now, we're just going to show you some bicep exercises and you're going to demonstrate. We're going to have, we're going to have Chris demonstrate the uh, bicep yeah, exercises because he's peeled, he's peeled all the time, all year the time. round. Yeah. So he's got a good mindset. He's always growing. There you go. Let's show you some <laughs> bicep movements. All right. Okay, guys. So the first exercise we're showing here today is a incline high cable curl. Now, as you can see, he has himself seated on a bench of about 45 degrees or so. He has his arms up and held out in front of his body. He's keeping his elbows high throughout the movement, as you can see, and only flexing at the elbows. He's trying to move the shoulders as little as possible. He's not dropping them down or bringing them up at all. He's focused on, on a full range of motion all the way out to full stretch and then coming back for a full squeeze all the way to the forehead. And you want to hold that squeeze for about a second at the top and get a really good contraction in the biceps. Now, this movement also, I should say, because the arms are held up and away from the body, it also, also strongly brings the brachialis into play. So it's a really, really great bicep peaking movement because the brachialis will push the bicep up a little bit higher. Excellent movement when you're looking to peak out the biceps. Great finisher in an arm workout. Okay, so here's another uh, cable movement I like to use for Again, adding some peak to the biceps because as you can see, again, the elbows are held up and away from the sides like they would be with normal barbell curls. And when you do this, it actually deactivates the biceps a little bit and makes the brachialis work even harder during flexion of the elbows. So when you build the size of the brachialis, which lies underneath the biceps, it will actually act to push the biceps up higher, creating what looks like a greater peak. As you can see again, He's keeping his elbows in place. He's not letting them rock forward or back. And he has his body positioned so they can actually bring the, the, the bar back behind the head. This way he's getting a full, really complete uh, contraction of the biceps and the brachialis. He's holding that squeeze for a second and then he's controlling it all the way to the top. There's no half reps here. It's a full range of motion to the top. 
down again, getting a good squeeze. Again, another great peaking movement for the biceps. Okay, so again, I'm using the incline bench. I love using the incline bench for variations on curls. So this is sort of like doing a preacher curl, but without any elbow support. Uh, he has a bench set at about uh, 60 or so degrees. He's leaning over the bench and he's just letting his arm, arms uh, straight down. He's keeping his elbows locked in place, his shoulders locked in place, and he's basically just bringing the bar up, flexing at the elbows, and cramping the biceps at the top. This is a really, really great isolation movement. You cannot use the shoulders. The only thing that can work is the biceps and the brachialis. You don't want to go too heavy because you want to make sure that you're able to bring the bar all the way up and get that cramping effect at the top of the movement. Again, there's a great movement actually for this. Is, this will build some bicep mass as well as building the brachialis, even though you have to go a little bit lighter. Just a great overall bicep movement. Okay, so this final movement I want to show you guys is an upper cable curl uh, using one arm at a time. I love using unilateral movements for all body parts. Great way to finish a body part. And this is a really, really great one for the biceps. It isolates really, really well because the arm is up again, up away from the body. You cannot use the shoulder. Uh, you can only flex at the elbow and really get that good squeeze at the top. The idea here is to stretch all the way out at the top. As you can see, his body is leaning away from the cable so you can get that full stretch. He's keeping his elbow just a little higher than parallel to the ground and he's getting that full squeeze trying to bring the bar almost as if he was trying to bring it behind his head and that gives you a really good cramping effect in the bicep you can really really feel it it's like flexing the bicep under tension this will give you a huge pump and a totally different feeling in the bicep give this one a shot all right biggie these were some some uh, cool uh, biceps movement we're lucky to have big chris with us today you get you get good arms so always looks better when you rip <laughs> and little do people know that we train quads and tries before I we know. Up. So we're <laughs> like all a little beat up. The third body part for him. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually were lucky enough to have him design some some special dog tag just for you, right? You want to show with your own quote? Yeah, yeah. Um, so here's the dog tag. Here's what it looks. Here's the little symbol on there. Yeah, yeah. I like uh, the line. And this is the way mine look here. As my one of one of my quotes on there. Jose, if you want to be good, then learn to start pushing your limits. If you want to be extraordinary, do not ever acknowledge they exist. Oh, I like it. Yeah, so that's one of my quotes. You came up with that? That's yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's one of my quotes, and uh, that's a personal quote of mine. And then on my other dog tag, it has like my IG and all that hey. kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool. So if you get lost, you can be found. So yeah, so it's like, <laughs> it's truly like I'm a dog, and if I get lost, people go, oh look, he's got his tags with him. <laughs> Come on, Merlin. Hopefully Come here, boys. you ever, never get lost. But yeah, so I'm really glad he made these for me. It's really cool, and I thank yeah, Chris man, for doing that's that. That's an honor, it. man. Um, so Chris, I want you to show me some of the product that you have, and a lot of those products that you came out with, you came out with them because you were like disappointed from what's out there today, and you're like, you know what? This is bullshit. I actually want to have a belt and you know straps and things that you know are actually more functional and. So show me what you got a little bit and then so people can see and why you designed them this way. Well, the belts, I was tired of getting a hole in my shirt. You know, we had a simple flap that we added. It keeps you from getting holes in your shirt. Normal belt, we have the embossed. Oh, we have the standard logo. Yeah. Kind of simple, but kind of important to save your shirts. I know, right? Shirts. It's a good thought. I mean, you know. No, that bag is cool because for a lot of people that are coming to the gym, like us here in Ocal, who are riding their bike, their motorcycle, like you and I, this is actually a bike you can actually use on your motorcycle, right? Look at this. Killer zipper. I love this zipper. That's a, that is cool. That's like army stuff. <laughs> you know, it has a strap too, it has the carry. This folds away if you don't want a backpack, you want a normal. But for me, I was in LA, riding the motorcycle, I mean, I needed something that wasn't gonna open up. I can bring a coat, bring all my gym stuff. You can put a lot of stuff in there. Right, so it is an oversized bag, but my phone, my stuff, cards, water bottle goes in here. Wow. You know, I think it's well thought out. You you designed this? I did. Nice. You know, and we're always making better changes, trying to find right now it's it's it. What else you got? Ankle straps. Okay. You need strong legs. So this is mo mostly for girls, right? Or mostly, but you know, it's lifetime warranty. It's it's killer. Lifetime warranty? Yep. 
Wow, okay. Good for all the girls who are doing cable butt kickbacks. I know, I was going to say, we don't do those. They stuff. need tons of those. <laughs> you know, and all the stuff is sold on our website, plus RX Fitness and Thousand Oaks sells it for us too. Okay. The retail store. Nice. Bands, since Bands the hottest new thing in the U.S. Now everyone, all girls in gyms use that. Small, medium, large, you know, got to have the resistance bands. One stripe. Small, two stripes, medium, three stripes. Plus we have the label inside. Small, medium, large. Come in a pack. Uh, water jugs, gotta have a good jug. For yeah, yeah, we drink a lot of liquids here. Water bottles. Now this is cool. That's actually a water bottle and you can freeze this, you said. Yep, freeze them. Wow. Back, back, thing, or on a hike, which I like. Freeze it, go on a hike. Then you're done, Just fold it right back up. <laughs> Flip, gone. That's awesome. Straps, wrist straps, wristbands. Wow. I like them, not even, not even always for rift support, but lifting heavy shrugs. Yeah. I'm tired of them digging in, so we got our own, but it protects that also. Yeah. So for me, I don't really need wrist support, but I don't want marks in my yeah. mail. So. And shirts, of course, you said, like the shirts yeah. you're wearing. And of course, got things like that, of course, yeah. Company. Are you planning on coming out with more stuff or? For now, that's... No, the website has more. Okay, okay. And it's, and, you know, I keep evolving. I keep changing stuff, adding stuff. These we did, now we have nice padding in them. Oh, nice. We're trying to make things... You know, we all train together. When somebody says, hey, how about this? I'm lucky enough to own the company. I change it, I make it. I try to make it better. Our bag has a sixth generation bag. Wow. So we keep updating, make things better. And that's awesome, man. Whatever customers want, man, we're going to keep changing up. Even though the bands... We have new resistance bands coming out. It's going to be 12 inch, three different strengths, 13 inch, three different strengths. Uh, videos will be coming with it, so I think that's going to be a big hit. So. That's awesome, Chris. So give the website again if people want to check out all the products. Mindsetgrind.com. Mindsetgrind.com. And you have a coupon code you told me that people want to actually get something to get a good discount. Inspiration is 20% discount. Just type that Boom. in. Boom, 20%, huh? Yeah. Nice. And our Instagram right now is mindsetgrind1. Number okay, one. we'll put that in. Do you have a YouTube, uh, not a YouTube, but a, a Facebook or? Facebook is just mindsetgrind.com. Okay, so yep. mindsetgrind.com, mindsetgrind1 for Instagram, right. and of course, you know, the website. We'll put all that stuff in there. You find us on Jay Cutler TV. All right, all right. So if people, oh, you also have a personal, um, you want to give your personal IG? Do people have any questions or did you just go to Mindset Grind uh, 1? My personal IG is Chris underscore Fisher, F I S C H E R underscore. C H E R, yes. 1 4. Awesome. That's my personal IG. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you so much for coming in, Chris. Thank you, Dave. All right. All right, Merlin. What do you got, man? You got any good questions this week? Yeah, I have a good uh, question which um, was asked to me by. Miss, Mrs. Becky Cowell. I thought you were going to say Maximilian. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just say right now that uh, Max is competing this weekend, so I'm going to wish him luck. Uh, and um, another one of my clients, uh, Claudia, she's doing the uh, IFBB uh, Pro Vancouver Women's Physique. She just placed fourth uh, Women's Physique a couple of weeks ago, and now she's doing her next show. So uh, good luck to both of them. Uh, but Becky, who actually has a show coming up in about five weeks, um, she asked me uh, about foot positions for calves. She said, uh, is there any one best foot position for calves, you know, toes out, toes straight, or toes in, or should you should, should you vary it? And uh, I want to kind of answer this question a little bit more generally than just for the calves, um, because I think it's important for all muscle groups. You know, if you watch the show and you've been a regular watcher of the show, if you've read my articles, you'll know that I'm somebody who really truly believes in variation uh, in the way that you hit muscles uh, in, in all aspects, you know, from what type of reps you do, from whether you hold the squeeze or the stretch, slow negatives, slow positives, higher reps, lower reps. I mean, I'm always changing things up because I believe that for most of us, uh, when I say the most of us, I mean people with average genetics, uh, we need to uh, hit muscles uh, differently all the time in order to reach our full genetic potential. There are, of course, a lot of genetic freaks out there. People will just say, oh, well, I never see that so-and-so ever changes the way he hits a muscle or he uses the same exercise all the time. Like even Ronnie Coleman, for a good example, pretty much did the same routine for his whole entire life. Uh, never really changed anything. And of course, was eight-time Mr. Olympia. 
but you know when you're talking about a complete genetic freak and most of the pros are uh, you know a lot of these these things you know they don't have to necessarily uh, change things up as much because their body's just primed to grow although that's not to say that they may not have even been even better if they did change things up but that's another story altogether so to get to the question uh, I don't think there's any one best foot position I think for for calves I think it is something that should be changed from set to set or workout to workout that could mean anything from toes in toes straight toes out it could also mean the width of your stance uh, on the platform it could also mean how you roll up onto the the toes uh, at the top of the movement if you roll up more towards the outer side the outer portion of the balls of the feet versus the inner portion you're basically going to change uh, the motor unit pools that you're hitting uh, you're going to hit different fibers uh, by putting the toes straight ahead versus outward uh, and all these different positions and this goes for any muscle group you know if you do lat pull downs uh, and you're doing a wide grip uh, maybe one set would be a grip that would be wider than the shoulders one one set would be a grip that is shoulder width one set would be just inside shoulder width uh, that's an example of, of changing um, you know the width of the grip to hit different motor unit pulls uh, if you're hitting say an incline dumbbell curl for an example uh, one set it uh, a, a 60 degree angle, one set at a 70 degree angle, one set at a 40 degree, degree angle. These are all just forcing the muscles to work in different ways, will be affecting different uh, muscle fibers, will be affecting the central nervous system slightly differently. And all of these small things, are they going to mean anything that day? No. Are they going to mean something over a long period of time? Yes, I believe that they're going to. Again, especially for most of us who are of average potential, average genetic potential, average amount of muscle fibers, average average fiber you know, types. Um, we need to take advantage of as many things as we possibly can in training so that we can bring as much potential out of each muscle group uh, as we could possibly get. So basically what I'm saying is yes, switch your angles, switch your planes of motion, switch uh, the, the width of stances, whether it be hands or feet, uh, on leg presses, curls, pull downs, bench presses, everything. Uh, even if you do it, you know, set to set, workout to workout, even month to month, make a change so that your body does not stagnate and that you're not hitting the same sets of muscle fibers all the time. We need variation to continue to grow, whether it be calves or any other muscle. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Biggie.